Hey YouTube. Okay, we are back in the history of gear. We are back in sleeping bags. Doesn't mean we're going to uh, move away from other uh, significant developments in the early 20th century uh, camping gear, but we're going to move back into sleeping bags. Uh, what we're talking about on this video is something that I consider to be a very significant find, at, at least for me. I'm kind of a sleeping bag nerd, just in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to link to the uh, playlist I've created just for the history of sleeping bags. We've got enough videos in the History of Gear series uh, to start breaking uh, the History of Gear into separate categories. Uh, at, but just to recap, for most of the first 20 years of the 20th century, the preferred method of sleeping on, the preferred insulation for sleeping outside at the consumer level, was wool, mostly in the form of wool blankets. Uh, and there were a few commercial sleeping bags that were also made out of wool. But what I'm about to show you here is something that, if it's not the earliest one of its kind, is certainly emblematic of the change in consumer level insulation. Moving away from the weight and bulk of wool and an attempt to go lighter weight and less bulky. Let's listen to what the old man has to say out here. He's in the backyard, so there's a lot of other noise, and I apologize for that. We'll see you at the other end. Okay, so this is the condition in which we found this sleeping bag. It was inside this Wolsey pattern officer's bedroom. Uh, we'll get a couple close-ups of this. It's a nice, nicely patterned, uh, looks like a waist and belt. And uh, we've got the name uh, of the uh, gentleman and the unit he was in. Now, the bedroll itself was in fairly poor condition. Uh, but it did its job. It protected the sleeping bag. We'll open this up. Uh, this is supposed to be sewn on this side. But here we can see the sleeping bag a good deal better. And again, we'll get some uh, we'll get some close-ups. We'll take it out of the bag, out of the bedroll, so that we can better see it. It has this uh, checkerboard pattern sewed, and we'll talk about the insulation once we get back inside. Some very large buttons. It is only open about 30 inches along the uh, right-hand side of the sleeping bag. And we'll pull it out of the uh, bottom of the bedroll. And as you can see, it's got this integrally sewn in pillow. That's a, actually a pretty nice feature. And it fits very well up inside the, uh, the dedicated pillow pocket of the Wolsey pattern bedroll. Uh, the thing I looked for for about, about two years was this. Uh, logo here. I could not find the company, and we'll get you a close-up of that as well. But this is how we found it. The bedroll itself is, has no 
real collect collector's value uh, because it is so damaged. Uh, there's a good deal of the sewing. Uh, the parts uh, have come apart. Uh, but under whatever s uh, storage conditions it was in, it protected the bag. We'll show you a little feature here of this bedroll. If you've got this uh, cotton flannel pocket here that you can put in uh, a, a mattress or, or even an air mattress that were available at the time. So let's go back into the house and talk a little bit more about this bag and what is significant about it in the development of sleeping bags of the early 20th century. Okay, there we go. Alright, what we've got is a really old sleeping bag. It's made sometime around 1914, sometime between 1914 and 1918. That's when World War I was. That's when this officer would have had this sleeping bag and this bedroll. And I will link to a video about bedrolls and valises uh, if you if you want to see more about this Wolsey pattern bedroll. But what what's significant about this? Well, let's start by telling you the story of how I tracked it down. I'll try to keep it short because it took me a while. The first thing is that logo I showed, and 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 I'll show it up here now get a little better view. Now if you look at that, the the company name is is uh, made out of calligraphy. It's awful hard to tell which is the first letter then in the middle letters and the last letter in this mish, mismatch up here of, of, of letters. But what we do know is that at the top it says interlined and underneath it says fleece. Now, when I first saw this, I thought maybe that was the principal insulation in this sleeping bag, but I had to confirm it. Now, what interlined fleece is, interlining is a material that fits between two pieces of fabric or is sewn to the back of, of a piece of fabric in order to give it some kind of shape and structure, okay? Usually lightweight fabric and slightly heavier, heavier weight interlining. Now this fleece interlining was being used by the very popular Burberry coat, which has come to be known as the trench coat. Very warm and lightweight piece of outerwear favored by officers in the British and American Army. Okay, so it seemed logical that that was the only insulation, but it, it kind of felt a little bit more. So I tried to track down the company and after trying several different iterations and looking in several different places I finally put in PERCO, P-E-R-C-O, all one word. And I came up with this. Now we can see, okay, we've got the company. Perco. Now I start searching for Perco sleeping bag. Can't find a thing. But what I do find is this. Well, now we've got something called Perco Down. Well, now we've got to figure out what Perco Down is. They don't say Goose Down. That they don't say eider down like like the Woods and the and the Grant Holden and Graham down sleeping bags. What is Perco down? Now the problem was is all of the advertisings I was finding for Perco were post World War One, and they were all advertising bedding, blankets, and mattresses nothing about sleeping bags. So what are we doing? What is Perco? What is Perco down? Well then, I just happened to come across 
this. K-pop. That's what Perco Down was, is K-pop. I later came across uh, an advertisement, uh, an article, that mentioned the Latin name of the plant that they were using, and it is a member of the K-pop tree species. But why is this important? Well, because in the history of sleep bags, in the history of camping gear of the 20th century, the most ubiquitous form of consumer level insulation for sleeping bags was KPOC. It just wasn't done by the Perco Company. It appears that the Perco Company mainly got into the sleeping bag business and, as, as, as the ad shows, in the clothing business uh, during World War I. They were, they were looking at this market and trying to fulfill the market aimed at World War I officers. But apparently it wasn't enough to drive them uh, to continue in clothing and outdoor gear. Now, that leads us to the next video in the sleeping bag series, uh, which will come in a couple of weeks, about the two companies and the type of sleeping bags that they sold that pretty much established the form and function of sleeping bags of two-thirds of the 20th century. Alrighty. Hope I told the story I meant to tell. If not, I'll try to fill it in on another video. If this video has helped you at all, if it's given you information you didn't have, if it's given you a reason to look, uh, to do your own study, or to watch more of my videos, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, share the video with your social media contacts, don't forget to hit that notification button so that when the next video comes out, you know about it. Now, all of this helps people with the same interests in camping gear that you and I have, because we know they're out there. There's just not a whole lot of us. So go ahead and do that. Maybe we'll get a little bit more recognition. Also, we'll see you on the Bannerman's Camp Facebook page, where we can talk a lot about this kind of thing. Alrighty, we'll see you down the trail.